Great to be here. Uh, my name is Morten Helberg. I'm CEO and co-founder of Organoclick. Uh, so nice to be in front of an audience again after having looked into a camera for two years. So uh, really nice and really fun to be here. Uh, well, as, um, uh, as was presented, I, uh, I met two Swedish professors 16 years ago. Uh, they were doing, they had, had already in the mid-90s started to understand that this would become a problem. Uh, plastic waste and petrochemicals that, were, that had been the, the traditional way of producing chemistry and the materials for, since the mid-19th century. Uh, they started to see that this will be a problem. Today, about 8 million tons of plastic are released into the ocean every year. And what they were looking at was, are there things in nature that you can use to replace these plastics and petrochemicals. This is a field of science called biomimicry. Uh, you, we're looking at uh, natural chemical processes, like what, what is the chemistry behind a tree becoming so strong, or why does some leaves become water repellent, or why do some trees burn less good than other trees? What are the natural molecules that is creating these type of properties in plants and, and trees? From this, uh, from this research, and uh, when we started the company, we really had a strong mission. Um, we wanted to replace plastics and toxic chemicals with bio-based solutions. And uh, when I met these two professors, they had developed a technology which we call modification of cellulosic fibers. Uh, that is, we can click on different bio-based molecules to cellulose, which are the, uh, the base in paper, in textiles, in wood, uh, and click on molecules that gives new properties. Depending on what we click on, we can get properties like water repellents, fire retardants, uh, durability to, to rot fungus, uh, or uh, improved strength. Uh, and we use uh, a technology called organocatalysis. This is a chemical uh, process where we use small molecules derived from, from fruits or derived from different plants. Uh, and this Organocatalysis was actually awarded the Nobel Prize last year. And uh, we can say that we, we're pretty proud that Organoclick was one of the first companies in the world to start using organocatalysis in commercial applications. And now, uh, 16 years after we started the company, th this was awarded the Nobel Prize. Um, from this uh, f uh, research that we started 16 years ago, we have developed a number of different products and uh, different product areas uh, where we use this core technology. We have um, a way of treating wood in order to give it uh, fire retardants and uh, improve durability, where we replace um, biocides and heavy metals used in traditional impregnation. Uh, we have another area which we call biocomposites and biobinders, where we use natural biopolymers that replace plastic polymers in non woven and technical textile materials. So we're replacing um, plastic binders. That is the way of, of creating, for example, a napkin, a napkin that you can, use, that you can find in restaurants. They, they are, they are um, made of cellulosic fibers and plastic polymers today. I'll talk more about that later, but this is something that we are replacing. And uh, finally, we, we are making textile waterproof or water repellent by replacing fluorocarbons or PFAS molecules, which is um, now in, uh, about to be banned in the, U in the European Union. This has been the, uh, they are hormone, uh, hormone disruptive and cancerogenic, and this has, is something that uh, one have realized during the last 10 years, and now they are being banned, and we have a technology to replace them with biodegradable bio molecules. Uh, <coughs> today then, 16 years later, uh, we are, we are a growing chemical technology company. We have um, our headquarter uh, and our production facility and R&D lab in, uh, up in northern Tabby, Arning Industry in Rådi, if someone of you know who, where it is. There we have 5,000 square meters uh, with, production, with a production capacity of 10,000 ton per year. Now we are upgrading it. We have invested in a new production line, so we will doubling, double the capacity to 20,000 ton of our chemistry per year. And last year we had revenues of 110 uh, million sec. Um, so been growing steadily during the, the last 10 years since we launched our first product in 2012. Uh, we, we have, uh, our business is organized into four different business areas. We have the functional wood area where we are targeting the, the wood industry and the building industry. 
uh, we have what we call the green coating and maintenance area where the textile impregnation product is, uh, is located. And then we have the biocomposites and non-woven and technical textiles where we are targeting industrial companies like non-woven producers, specialty paper producers, and technical textile producers. Uh, we have developed four different technologies that we can, that we can uh, um, use in, in all, all different materials. Uh, water repellents, mechanical strength, uh, fire retardants, and uh, rot protection. So this is the, let's say, the red line of the technology is the cellulosic fiber, and that we can use our different technologies on the, the materials where, we, where cellulosic is, is a natural component. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, this is an example of our customers that we are working with today. Uh, the first area, non-woven and technical textiles and biocomposites are, 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 as I mentioned, targeting industrial customers. Uh, Duni was, the, was um, an agreement signed with last year, and there we are about now to replace the plastic binders that they are using in their napkins and in, in their tablecloths with our bio-based binder solutions. Uh, just uh, one month ago, we announced uh, the new collaboration with Alstom Munchö, where they are also, they're also producing speciality paper and non-woven, and they are now about to replace also plastic binders in their different products with our bio-based binders. Uh, Sharpsell is another Finnish non-woven producer. Uh, Baux are producing um, sound-absorbing panels that are used on walls, and, and they are using them biofibers, which we are binding together with our binders, and Fred Allerdeens is Nordic's largest producer of burial coffins. They are also using our binders in their material to bind the cellulosic fiber together in their, coffin, in their coffins. So quite a broad range of, of different um, customer groups, but we are using the same type of product from us, the same technology to bind fibers together in these areas. Uh, within the functional wood and the green coatings and maintenance area, we are mainly targeting resellers because these are more consumer-based products, but also professional uh, users. But we are strong in targeting the, the building industry and working with, uh, with most of the building suppliers in, in, in Sweden, uh, also uh, growing a lot in other parts of, of Europe. And uh, for, for um, Organotex, we've been growing extremely well during the last year and have been, are now included in most sport retailers in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden and are also growing a lot in Norway, Finland, the Netherlands and Denmark. Uh, if, we go into, if we go into what has happened during the last year uh, in our industrial area, we, we signed a contract with Duni, which is, uh, which is worth approximately 30 million crowns per year when we have it scaled up to full scale, which, will, uh, which is uh, expected to happen in the second half of this year. So this is something that we are ramping up right now together with them. Uh, in February, we signed a deal with Alstom Munchö, uh, which is then we are now coming into uh, agricultural tax textiles. So you, this type of textiles that you are putting out on, on fields, but also in uh, their customer, Ellipot, they are, they are making flower or uh, plant pots that is uh, this type of material that you that you take that you use around plants that you put into the ground and they are this is for industrial uh, industrial growth so this is an area which is quite big actually and, and this is a recently big customer of of Walter Munch. Uh, we have also 10 customer projects in production test about 10 different uh, and 10 different customers, and these are among the 20 biggest producers of non-woven and, and uh, uh, specialty papers in the world. Uh, two of them are close in also being new products launched, so hopefully we can, uh, we can go out with some more news regarding that shortly. And uh, in order to, to grow this segment, we have now also invested in a new production line which will have a capacity of 10,000 tons per year. And this is being built up right now, and we, are, we plan to take it in, in operations in Q2. Uh, within the green coatings and maintenance area, uh, we, we, we have then, this is a consumer brand, so this is used for re-impregnation. It's like an aftermarket for textile impregnation. Um, here we have sold, this first product was uh, launched in 2018. Last year we also launched 
a show care program. We are then we are here replacing the traditional way of making textiles um, waterproof, which is by this PFAS and fluorocarbons. Uh, and here we've been growing very well during the last year. We, we more than doubled the revenues in this product segment last year. We signed the new reseller agreements with XXL, Stadium and Herx, adding about 200 more resellers. Uh, and we, for, that, for that expansion, we invested in a new production line uh, for, for filling bottles, because this is really the, the biggest part in production, filling all the bottles, because we're shipping out thousands and thousands of these bottles uh, all the time. Uh, and this was also the biggest problem for us last year, if, I'm, if I go into the problematic part, because this filling line beca became late. The delivery was late due to the COVID factory that was affected by COVID. So we had to stand and fill all these bottles that for the new customers manually. So we had to take in half an army of people to fill bottles last year. Uh, and that was very costly for us. But uh, now that they solved that problem. Uh, within the functional wood um, area, we, have the, we are now launching a new generation uh, technology that is um, replacing the old technology. Uh, this is something, uh, this is really to be able to compete even more against um, uh, traditional pressure impregnated wood. Uh, technology which have a lot better durability compared with the old technology and also easier maintenance. Here we also, also signed an agreement with Base Timber UK to expand our business into, into UK. Uh, this is now being ramped up during Q1 and Q2. Uh, and the German market, which we were entering two years ago, grew really, really well. So this is also what we are focusing on a lot to continue the growth in Germany. Uh, if you look at economic development, um, this is, a, this is a, a picture which have two sides, really. We, 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 were growing, we have been growing steadily every year uh, for the last uh, five years, as you can see. Uh, we were actually growing a little bit better last year, but, and this is the big but, uh, this, um, we had two, two major problems last year. First of all, raw material prices. They, they were increasing heavily last year. We had some of our raw materials were increased in price with more than 100% during one year. Uh, and, and this affected our gross margin, as you can see here on, on the line for gross margins a lot. We, we have had a positive trend for gross margins during, the, during four years, and we expected this to continue because we are, we are changing the product mix. But due to the fact that raw material prices increased so much, we, we were always like one quarter after to increase prices to our customers. Uh, so, so it's been like... One of the major things we did last year was increasing prices to customers all the time because we got new price increases from our raw material suppliers uh, every quarter. Uh, and uh, that fact and also uh, the fact that this uh, production line became late, so we had to, we had to use a lot of manual labor to, to produce the bottles, made that uh, the um, EBITDA, that which we expected to be positive last year, if you look at the trend, it was very close to being positive, it, it uh, actually decreased. So, but, and this is what feels really good. In Q4, we were finally back on track with the gross margins again. We had been, we had been pushing up prices all it, uh, every, every quarter, and then uh, when the prices started to level out during the autumn, we could get back on track. So we increased the gross margins in Q4 compared with Q4 2020. Uh, which felt really good because we have been worse every quarter, in, in particular during Q2 and Q3. Uh, so now we feel now we feel that we are in a, in a good position. All prices have gone up, as you can see with the, with the inflation, of course. Uh, I mean, we see that because we are buying in raw materials like molecules, and that is where, where the whole inflation starts. Actually, uh, just to mention an, an, an example, uh, which is small part of the inflation for food, but the citric acid, which is a component that we use quite a lot, increased with 300% last year. And that is the main component for creating, uh, you know, th this type of, of taste, which is uh, a little bit sour in all foods as well. And that was a 300% price increase. And we, we use that quite a lot in our products as well. So th this is the reality in, when you're looking at raw materials from really this small component side. So I, I, I said in, in June, we will have a big inflation in food prices coming up because we saw all this 
the, all these uh, small molecules going up in price heavily. But now, finally, we are back on track here, and that feels very good. Uh, looking at the outlook of 2022, we expect Organotex to continue its fast sales growth. We see very good uh, sales here in the beginning of 2022. Uh, so here we, we, we don't see that this will level out at all, uh, the, the sales increase that we have here. Uh, this is also very good for us because this is one of the products where we have good above average profitability. So this is something that is driving up our gross margins for the whole group. Um, one of the key things that we're working on, of course, is ramping up the production to Duny and uh, to Alström and Munchö. Uh, but also finalizing the, the, the two most advanced projects that we have that, that are in, in late stage. They are, uh, all of these projects are in the same level as, uh, as the Duny deal. So that this is the same type of, um, yeah, approximately the same type of, of uh, amount that we can sign on these deals. And this is, of course, when you see, see this deal that you sign with Duny, it's a five year agreement. So it's long-term deals that you sign with this type of, of companies because they want to have stability in their supplies as well. Um, yeah, for, for the functional wood segment, we are switching over to the new uh, technology. This is a very important thing for us. We will phase out our old technology and, and phase in the new technology, but also, also continue with international expansion, in particular in Germany and the UK. The UK is completely virgin market for us. We have a good distributor agreement there with Base Timber. UK, which is a good, have a good sales company, uh, and uh, this will be really interesting to, to see what, where that leads. Uh, and of course, we, yeah, this uh, new production capacity that we're adding, that is an extremely important thing for us in order to grow further, because uh, um, one factory which we are working towards, like the Duny factory, they are using in, in amount of between two to 4,000 tons per year of, of binder. So it's quite large amounts that we, are, that we need to produce and sell to, to these customers. So in order to, to add more customers, we need to add more production capacity. Um, we also believe that the, the product mix and also the price adjustments that we have made during the last year will now start to, to make the gross margin grow again, like it did in Q4. Uh, so we expect that to continue now in, during this year. And um, we know, now also have a plan and we believe this will uh, work to keep the OPEX at a steady level from, from Q4 uh, last year. So all this included will, of course, uh, create a much better profitability. This is the goal for us uh, for during this year. So with that, I thank you very much for listening. So, Morten, uh, there is much awareness now about the PFAS that you talked about, the, the hormone-disturbing uh, chemicals that are in lots of products. Uh, and, for instance, they are in food containers. Yes. So, how about the possibility and what you look at the, the prospects of, of moving into the segment of replacing, for instance, fast food, well, the hamburger packages, some of them have mm. uh, those hormone-disturbing substances. Yeah. That's a huge market. Absolutely, and uh, here I, 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 uh, I then want to uh, want to talk about our collaboration with Pulpac that we that we that we went announced last year. Uh, Pulpac is um, uh, a very innovative uh, or now also fast-growing company making 3D-shaped packages or machines for 3D make uh, 3D uh, pressed packages, uh, which is called dry molded technology. And they are now, they are working, to, for example, together with um, uh, OF Packaging, so, oh no, o o AR Packaging, and other packaging companies. And there we have developed, we are using our technology to just replace PFAS to, for uh, food, in food bar packaging barriers. So um, we, are, we are involved in that field as well. Excellent news. Who wants to, we don't want to eat out, out of no. packages that are... A threat to our health, right? Uh, you mentioned the Nobel Prize uh, that is uh, behind these, this innovation. Uh, how about competition and other companies using these innovation, innovative techniques? Um, I have to then look into the various segments. I think um, uh, where we have the least competition is within the, the bio-based binders for non-woven and for specialty papers. There we are completely alone in offering 100% biodegradable and bio-based 
binder solution for, uh, for non-wovens. Uh, and this we get uh, confirmed from all customers that we're working with. Uh, no one else is uh, doing what you're doing. You seem to have been very early in this. And yes, this is the, this is the truth. We started developing this already in 2008. Way before the Nobel uh, Prize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. So um, the next step, the next big step for you this year, uh, you mentioned that you were sort of over, you estimate that you're over the hump, with the, the challenge here with, with, uh, that you just pointed out. Uh, so, so what are you looking forward to the most during 2022? Um, ramping up uh, supply of our binders mm -hmm. and looking at that's also the continuous development of Organotex, which is also doing very well right now. Well, best of luck. Thank, Thank you, you for coming.